Hi and welcome everybody. My name is Chris from Teach and Student and in this video I will show you how you can easily upload any type of files to your Moodle site. You can upload PDFs, Word, PowerPoints, Excel, uh, JPEGs, PNG files, even video formats like MP4 and a lot more. The cool thing is the upload process is the same for all file types. So let's do it together step by step. As you can see, I am on my course site and turn editing on. If you're wondering why my edit button is here on the top right, I am using Moodle version 4.0. If you are using Moodle version 3, the edit button is a bit further down on your site, but all the processes are working the same in Moodle version 3 and 4. Once we have the edit button turned on, all we have to do is go to our computer folder where we are storing our file. In my case, I just go to my desktop, locate my file. This is for example a Word file. I then click on the file and keep the mouse pressed to drag and drop the file in the section I want it to appear. There you go. That simple. You can literally drag and drop everything from your computer into your Moodle core site. Let's do that again. This time I take this PowerPoint file and again drag and drop the file in my Moodle site. Super easy. If the drag and drop process is not working in your case, don't worry, I will show you another way to upload documents. All we have to do is click on add an activity or resource. Then we find the file option under resources and select it. We can now give the file we want to upload a name and then go down to the select file section. Here again, you could drag and drop your file, but since it might not be working for you, we click on the little add icon here on the top left. From here, make sure you are in the upload a file section and click on choose a file. Now you can navigate to the document on your computer. I'm just going again to navigate to my desktop and select the word file from before. Click open and the file is displaying here on the right. Now don't forget to click upload this file. You will see the file in the preview yep, here and we click save and return to course. And that's it, the file is on your course page. Students can now click on the file to download it on their own computer. There are a few settings that you can change once you have uploaded your file. Let's check that out as well. We just click on the three dots of our file and select edit settings. Here you can, for example, change the name of the file, how it is displayed on your course site. You can also give your file a description, blah, 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 which can be quite useful since the file name sometimes doesn't give your students enough information on what the file is actually there for. Usually, I would not recommend having a description for resources displaying on the course page, but for files, that is okay sometimes, which is why we tick this box here to let students see the description on the course site below the file. But please keep the description nice and short, otherwise it looks horrible on the course site. In the appearance section, you can determine how you want the file to be displayed on your site, or I would rather say how your students can access the file. Automatic means that Moodle kind of decides the best way for students to access the file, depending on the file type. So our Word file here would, for example, download straight away when clicking on it, as I've shown you before. But if we, for example, upload um, a PDF file, Moodle would decide to open the PDF on the same site, so wouldn't force the download. So if you want students to directly download the PDF, you would have to select Force Download. But in most cases, Automatic is the easiest option to select. If you select Embedded, you can see the file content within your Moodle site when clicking on it. Let's do this quickly. And as you can see, it doesn't really work well with Word documents, kind of obvious because people have to work in it. 
but let's quickly upload a PDF to show you how it looks. So we drag and drop this PDF file. Then we go to the settings, appearance, and we select embed, save it. And there we go. Now, when we click on the file, you get this embedded PDF. Let's go back to the settings one more time. Settings, appearance, and we have force download, which of course downloads the file as soon as the user clicks on it, just like we saw with our Word file before. Open means that the file opens in the current window. Again, this won't work with the Word file. The Word file would still automatically download, but it would work for PDFs. Alternatively, if we put the setting of the PDF file on pop-up, the file would open in a separate window, which I personally prefer. In the appearance settings, we also have three little tick boxes that are pretty self-explanatory. If you take any of these boxes, the information will display on the course site next to the file. Let me just say one thing. I think it's fair to have the show size box ticked because it shows the students what to expect when downloading a file or they can even you know, see how long it might take them to download the file. I'm just going to tick all three boxes to show you how it looks. Save it. And you can see all this information from left to right next to the file. All the other file settings are the same as in any other activity or resource, so we don't have to go through them. What I want to show you though is what happens when you upload images or videos. Let's just drag and drop this image into our course site. And this time we will get a little option box. When we now select add the media to the course page, the image, or actually the same with the video, gets embedded in the page as a label, okay? So not as a file to download, as you can see here, it's part of a label. If we drag and drop the same image again, there we go. And this time we select create file resource. The image is an actual file resource with all the setting options that we've just seen before. And if you select download in the appearance settings, students can obviously download the image or the video. One last really important point that you might want to know is that you can drag and drop zip files. I show you how this is done because it's really great. So I have a zip file on my desktop and I drag and drop the file in my course, which gives me an option window just like with the image before. If we now click on unzip files and create folder, Moodle automatically creates a folder resource, not a file resource, a folder resource with all the individual files in it to be viewed or downloaded separately. So as you can see, we have the folder resource here and when you click on it, you see all the files included in the zip folder ready to be downloaded. Let's do the same thing again and drag and drop the zip file. And if we click on create file resource, the whole zip file gets added to the site as one single file, which students then can download and have the zip file on their computer. If you're wondering, the third option that you saw is uploading a SCORM file, which is a whole different thing. It just uses kind of zip files as a container. So we're not going to go into that today. But that was it, a quite detailed lesson on how to upload all different kind of files to your Moodle site. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Take care.